Hello, my name's Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, and I'm the creator of the Self Storage Quick Start Academy. How to build your first self storage facility, how to buy your first self storage facility. Those are just some of the courses that are at the Quick Start Academy, and I'm here to support the small investor to strategically get in the self storage business in a way that creates true wealth and a fulfilling career. Greatest business on earth. And I have a request for you if you'd be willing to do it. I have not put much time or energy into my YouTube channel but it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to the videos these on all the blogs that we put on creating wealth through self storage we also put the same video on YouTube and it just helps people find out who want to find out about the self storage business by subscribing to that channel it would help them find out more about self storage if I can support them I want to do it I would appreciate you doing that and I've often said that there's about five things that if you keep your eye on you're gonna have a great business what's strange is very few people ever ask me what are the five things that you keep your eyes on what we call them are KPIs key performance indicators and if you and more specifically the manager of the facility as well keep their eye on about five KPIs you're gonna have a fantastic business now what I've noticed is about people about human beings and about our managers in particular that if whatever they put their attention on things begin to happen there so if we have our managers and we have ourselves putting our attention on these five KPIs literally that does more to move the needle than almost anything we can do so my coaching is as an owner you keep your attention on these key performance indicators and if you don't have your first facility yet this is still important to you why because if you know what these are as you're talking to your bank as you're talking to your partners you can talk intelligently about the business and it gives everyone the confidence that you know this industry and you are someone who's on top of it and knows more than them and they should listen to what you say you are the expert in the room about it so let's talk about what are the five KPIs that we keep our eyes on the first KPI is income per month this is literally just how much money comes into the facility in the form of income each month now what I've experienced is for the managers that is a simple number for them to track. They see it every day on their daily clothes. They very often relate to the facility, not in terms of net income, but in terms of gross income, how much money that they handle that goes into the bank account. And what we do is each year we create a budget around November, December, and our managers are involved in that process. We know what the numbers are gonna be based on the performance that we've done, but they know they have a stake in this number and they track it I've got one manager that literally has divided it by days and she knows on if it's the 15th of the month it's two times 15 she should have 30,000 in the bank by the 15th and she knows whether she's ahead or not also by having that monthly number that they're tracking as they get to the 15th the 20th of the month if they're behind they know it and they can do what needs to happen in order to hit that number that is a number manager can track it's easy for them and they relate to it the next is occupancy rate what is the occupancy rate when I walk into a facility and talk to a manager I promise you at some time early in the conversation I'm going to ask them what is their occupancy rate they know that I'm watching it therefore they're watching it and they know it now a tip is occupancy rate based on square footage not based on units occupancy rate based on square footage that is a key number that we track all of the time when we're doing our performance though that is the number that we put at 85% or 88% in today's market if you're a stabilized property I promise you you're probably over 90% if you're not you either have a challenging property or 
you don't have your attention on it. Now, the next KPI that we track and we have our managers track, and this is a fairly new one for us how we're doing it, but it's percent of delinquent. We used to just track how much delinquent, but now we've got our managers and ourselves relating to it as a percentage of income. So how you do it is you go on the daily, the monthly close at the end of the month, and we look at it throughout the month, but we track it and monitor it by the end of the month. And whatever the total amount owed in the zero to 30 days, 30 to 60 day, 90 and up, whatever that bottom number is, divide that number by the monthly gross potential income, and that is your delinquency as a percentage. Now, a good percentage is 5% or less. There will be some properties though that just run higher. My experience is in lower demographic markets or more blue collar markets that tends to run higher. We don't give our managers a lot of slippage on that, but just know as an owner that can be higher, but five is a great number to be, 5% or less is a great number to be targeting. If you're not there, be going for it and have your managers going for it. Just let them know that this is a number that you're tracking. The next KPI that we measure is retail sales per move in. Again, this used, just used to be a number that we tracked. But it was hard to compare a big facility to a small facility and you know some facilities have 30 move-ins a month even when they're stabilized other ones might have 12. so what we've done is we we measured the amount of retail sold in a month divided by the number of move-ins and a great number is 50 to 60 dollars per move-in no matter what it is you can target it for higher again most of the retail is sold when people move in although some we have some facilities that gets a lot of street traffic and we sell a lot of boxes and moving material but generally it's when someone moves in so we track retail per move in in that way you can have a contest or you can compare a 20,000 square foot facility against a 50,000 square foot facility and if the 20,000 has $50 per move in and the larger one has 30 then this even though they have more move ins and their number was bigger there's work to do over here so that is a number that we track we've had them as low as 15 to 20 when we start off but just know that if the managers know that's a number they're being measured by and they know how to figure it out that number will improve why because whatever we put our attention on it begins to move the needle and your managers are no different and if you're hiring right you've got managers that it makes a difference for them to win at the games that they're playing at and then the last KPI, you basically have two options. If it is a stabilized property that we've had in our portfolio over a length of time, we will measure uh, this year against last year and we want to see the top line improvement, the expense relationship, and the net operating income improvement. So you can compare, we're 7% over top line income over last year, or you're, we're 4%. Our NOI is 4% higher than it was at this time last year. That's a good number to track. Or you could track tenant insurance sales per move-in as a percentage or tenant insurance sales as a percentage of the whole facility. In other words, if you sold five tenant policies last month and you had 10 move-ins, you had a 50% tenant insurance ratio of sales to move-in. If it's not a mandatory, 25% is a good number. But actually, we track all of those unless it's a brand new property and it's less than a year in service. Obviously, we don't track against last year. But those are the KPIs total monthly income, occupancy rate, delinquents as a percentage of income, retail sales per move-in this year, same time period versus last year, or tenant insurance as a percentage of move-ins. Those are the KPIs. Now, as an owner, 
If you know those numbers and are watching those numbers and are coaching everybody and training everybody to move the numbers forward that need to be moved forward, you're going to have an awesome business. That's why I like self-storage. It is not that complicated. Keep your eye on those things. Have everyone moving towards winning those games and you will have an awesome business. If you talk about those to bankers and investors, they get you know what you're talking about. Over the next few facilities, Facilities. We're going to dive deep into the management aspect of running this business. I haven't spent a lot of time on that. Why? Because it doesn't interest me as much as some of the other aspects of it. But it's very, very important. Whether you own your first facility or not, you need to know what's involved in running a good business because if you know that, it'll make getting the first or getting the next facility easier. So thank you very much for watching this. My name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creative creating wealth through self-storage, and I'm the creator of the Storage World Analyzer, which is a cloud-based financial analysis modeling tool that we use to determine the, what we can pay for a facility, the future cash flows of a facility, and we use those reports generated by that to help get our loans and get our investors and our deals. And that's literally what we use, that 10-year performa that's created by that program is what we use to, try to start our budgets each year. Five years down the road, we're starting with that 10-year performa that we did before we even bought the property. So. Thank you very much. Again, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and there'll be a link in this blog and thank you very much for doing that. That'll help a lot of people. See you later.